Hello, and welcome to Digital Citizenship. Digital Citizenship is a show designed to help you learn about the issues of living as a citizen in the digital world. In our show today, we will be looking at ways how we can educate ourselves and connect with others as we work in cyberspace. In today's program, we will look at three topics. Digital communication, digital literacy, and digital commerce. Digital communication. The Mayflower left England on September 16, 1620, and didn't reach the coast of North America until November 21st. During that 66-day journey, two people died and 43 more died the first winter. On April 15th of 1621, the Mayflower began its trip back to England and arrived there on May 16th. When the Mayflower arrived in England that May, it would have been the first news anybody heard about the new colony. In other words, the families of those 45 dead people would not have heard about their deaths until almost a year after they left England. News travels a lot faster today with digital media. Most of the time that's a good thing, but it can also cause problems. Let's watch as some students learn about connecting with others in cyberspace. Okay, today for your homework, you all are going to need to do page 113, numbers 3 through 15. Does everyone have that written down? 3 through 15. realized I made a mistake. I told you page 113, 3 through 15. It's actually supposed to be one uh, page 115, 3 through 13. So make sure that you cross that out. That you had page 113, 3 through 15 and write page 115, 3 through 13 instead. That is your homework for tonight. Uh, class, yesterday your homework assignment was page 115, 3 through 13. I need you to take that out now and pass it to the middle. Uh, yes, Tyler. Um, Lauren told me it was page 113, 5 through 15. When did she tell you that? When I was homesick yesterday and, and she, when she was texting during class. Lauren, were you texting during class? Um, yes, ma'am. You know you're not supposed to be texting in class. Although you had the information, you used it too soon and it didn't do you any good. Even though you have that technology and it's really good to use, sometimes it creates more problems than it solves because you get in a hurry and give the wrong information. Our ability to communicate instantly with almost any part of the world has changed life in the 21st century. High-speed communication is a good thing, but it can also lead to problems if not used wisely. Digital Literacy When was the last time you saw someone use an actual hardbound encyclopedia? <laughs> My grandfather, maybe. Many students today prepare school reports and other work without ever touching an actual book. When you go to the library or a media center, chances are you will use some sort of digital media to find the information you need. Many businesses and professions depend on digital media for their employees to do their work. And college students are often required to turn in their work through email or other digital media. If you go to the hospital, the doctor or nurse will probably be using a computer in the room as they work with you. Sometimes the doctor will be a kind of robot dressed in a white coat connected to a doctor in a remote location. All of this technology requires people that know how to use it effectively. Are you digitally literate? Just because you know how to tweet or poke online doesn't mean you know how to get the right information you need as a student or as an employee. Let's watch as some students learn about digital literacy. Um, did you find any good information on Thomas Jefferson? Well, I mean, I found some stuff, but I think they gave me some false information. Yeah. Um, Miss H. Yes. Um, can you help us find some like good websites for, for looking up Thomas Jefferson? Okay. Um, you're using Google and you're using Yahoo. Um, those are two good search engines. Um, but in order to find real good information, you kind of have to know what you're looking for. Um, if you'll notice at the end of the sites, if it says .org, then that means it's an organization. 
Um, not necessarily a credible organization, but an organization, because anybody can do an ORG website. .com, on the other hand, is probably the worst type of page you're going to want, because anybody can develop a .com. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not good .com websites out there, but you got to be very careful with that. Another site that you can use with your school system is nettracker.com. Uh, dot com and the school system purchases that and NetTracker weeds out all the the non-credible sources it gives you accurate information and it already filters that through so at some point in colleges may purchase NetTracker for you to use as well there's also the Kentucky Virtual Library which again has to be purchased um, but you can go to the Kentucky Virtual Library and it's just like going to a regular library you're going to get uh, accurate information because there is somebody that peruse their site and make sure that it is accurate. So you got to be careful when you're looking at Yahoo and Google they're international and going to pull up everything whereas your net tracker and your Kentucky Virtual Library are going to be a little bit more secure. If you're doing something on the founding fathers you want to look for maybe .gov. Those are your government industries and even though they're not guaranteed it's good. Um, the first one that always pulls up is Wikipedia. So you, you know, I'm sure that you've heard that Wikipedia can be edited by anyone. Mm -hmm. So it's not a credible site when you're using it for research. But if you're just trying to find something out, Wikipedia is not a bad place to go. Um, another good thing to look for is .edu. .edu are your colleges and your universities and your schools. and nine times out of ten what they publish is factual information so look at that URL when you pull up a site and kind of see where it's coming from a um, couple other things look for a source on the site if they put their name on the site probably credible information because nobody's going to put their name on a site that's not true or if they give you an email address for a contact so that you can contact them about that information if you don't see any of those things might be a little bit more aware of what that site has. Um, look for a date to see when it was last updated. Obviously you don't want to find a page that was is not recent. So those things are the things that you kind of want to look for. What if the site says .info? Sorry. Well .info is better than your .com and your .org but your .info sites are usually sponsored by somebody. They're sponsored by a company or something. So a lot of times there's shopping and there's ads and there's things like that. So the information may be skewed based on who's sponsoring that site. When you used to use encyclopedias, there was a group of people that would make sure the information in the encyclopedia was accurate before they put it in the book. There is no group regulating the internet. So you have to be very careful. Another place you could gather information would be Twitter, Facebook, blogs, all kinds of things like that. Um, Again, that could have very actual information. Um, you can actually notice that you're researching Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson has a Facebook page, believe it or not, but obviously Thomas Jefferson didn't make that Facebook page, but somebody did. Um, so there may be information on there, but again, you got to be careful because, of course, you don't know who made that Facebook page. Um, you could also tweet with uh, people in government and things like that. You can follow their tweets. Uh, but caution, you know, you never know if it's the actual person that you are following, but a lot of times it is, so that's another way to get information. Um, blogging, people do blog about different things, um, but blogging is opinions. Um, even though it might have stated facts, it's just an online journal that somebody has written, so be careful if you're quoting a blog as well. Digital literacy. Today, everyone needs to be able to work comfortably with digital media. Not only do students need good digital skills for school, but they will probably need them for whatever they do in life as well. Digital Commerce. Have you ever bought something online? We're not just talking about buying music or videos, but other things as well. Right. Maybe you have a Kindle or some other type of digital reader, and you get all your books digitally now? Digital commerce is a growing area, with more and more sales taking place every year in cyberspace instead of brick and mortar stores. But doing business in cyberspace requires us to be smart shoppers, like regular shopping does. Right. Just as there are many good things you can buy online, there are also many bad things. And paying for your purchases isn't as simple as breaking open your piggy bank. In most cases, you will need some kind of credit card or pay account to make your purchases, and that opens the door for identity theft. In any case, you will need an adult to help you make the purchase and to become a smart shopper in cyberspace. Let's watch as students learn about digital commerce. Dad, um, I was one. I just saw this really cool airsoft rifle on the computer, and I need your help buying it, please. Well, Daniel, what site are you on? Are you on a, a a site where you buy things over the computer? Yes, sir. 
Well, it, Daniel, you know that you, you can't buy things over the internet unless you're 18 years of age or older. What are you doing on there without talking to me about that first? I don't know, sir. Don't you think you should have come to me first and us talked about that uh, before you went on a, a site like that uh, so we could discuss what's appropriate or maybe what's not appropriate for somebody your age? Probably. Let's go look at this site first to make sure this is a site that's safe to be on and then we'll talk about whether this is something that we could buy for you or not. Uh, knowing that you'd have to have uh, somebody that's 18 years of age or older to use some kind of means to pay for this, like a credit card or a bank account, which you don't have either one of those, right? Is this a site that you were looking at? Yes, sir. Okay, well now this is a safe site uh, for you to look at because a lot of people buy things off of this site. But again, in order to go to this site and register as someone who is legally allowed to use this site, uh, again, you have to be 18 years of age or older, so really to come on this site, you need to have uh, your mother and I come with you. I don't mind you looking at things um, that you're wanting for, like birthday or Christmas or whatever, but you got to understand that you can't buy anything off of this site without your mother and I uh, being there with you to buy those kinds of things. You know, it's cool to be able to go out and shop online, but you've got to remember that there are a lot of local businesses here in Hardin County that have websites that you can go to and ask for things that would be a legitimate business here in town. We don't always necessarily know about these businesses are on, that are online, whether they, once we order it, whether they'll even send us good merchandise. By dealing with somebody that you know that has a website, websites are great things to go to in order to buy things, get information about an item that you would like to buy. And even with some of the local businesses here throughout our community, you could probably even ask them questions about an item that you want to buy. And so it's great commerce to, uh, to go through and use the web in order to look at things that you want to buy, not even for people your age, but people you know my age throughout the community. But with that comes some responsibility. And you've got to understand that when you type something in, um, if you're like me, sometimes our fingers are fatter than the keys and we might hit the wrong letter on typing something in. So we might accidentally get a website that's close to the website that we were looking at, but then all of a sudden something pops up that might be something that I wouldn't want you to see. It could be something illegal. But you've got to think about this. It also could be something that could get information about your web address and then come back and steal some personal information off of your computer. Or, here's the worst part, even download a virus to our computer that we wouldn't be able to protect ourselves. Yes, sir. Digital commerce. Business done in cyberspace is called digital commerce. People buy books, music, and even cars. Digital shoppers need to be aware of the potential problems with e-commerce and use it responsibly. Well, as you can see, there's more to digital citizenship than looking at Wikipedia or downloading music. Right, so what kind of citizen are you in the digital world? Well, that's all for this time. Join us again for Digital, digital Citizenship. citizenship.